Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn discuss further into different equations, um, the population growth videos, and now look at the uh, further into the other models of population growth, as opposed to the uh, basic logistic and the uh, simple um, exponential differential equation models that I went over in my earlier videos. And that was the first example of a different model. And this one is just a modification of the logistic equation and uh, we'll look at an example on it but uh, we'll go over part one of this example and I'll go over example uh, I mean part two of it next in, in the next video uh, basically part one is above and then part two is just uh, solving part E like that so let's go over this example it states let's modify the logistic differential equation as follows so we have DP over dt equals a 0.08p times 1 minus p over a thousand so that the that uh... if we just ignore this 15 that is the logistic equation that we've been dealing with in my many of my earlier videos but now we'll add this negative 15 and then part a states um, part a states suppose uh... P, uh p of t represents a fish population at time t where t is, in me is measured in weeks and it, and it says explain the meaning of the term negative 15. Part B states draw a direction field for this differential equation. Uh, part C is what are the equ equilibrium solutions and part D is use the direction field to sketch several solution curves describe what happens to the fish population for various initial populations. And then part E is basically solving it uh, solving this differential equation explicitly and uh, going on comparing it with the um, above uh, illustrations. So we'll do that uh, part E in the next video. So let's go over part A it says suppose uh, that P of T represents a fish uh, at time T explain the meaning of the term negative 15. Well if we look at this uh, DP over DT this is a growth rate but if we have this constant negative 15 and if this is a growth rate of the fish this means we are losing 15 fish uh, constantly. And, and another way of uh, saying that is basically, let's say, uh, one, one example is that you're fishing, is a, or people are fishing at a constant rate. So if you, if you account for a fish population, it's growing, but uh, there's fishing going on uh, as, it, as the population is growing, well, that just means that, um, yeah, that you have a constant rate of fishing. In other words, that there's a, it's accounting for harvesting of the fish, or basically just collecting them, fishing them, etc. Yeah, so here I've uh, written that down. Basically, the term negative 15 represents a harvesting of fish at a constant rate, in this case, 15 fish per week. So that's a rate at which fish are caught. So that's uh, one explanation for it. Now let's look at part B. So part B states draw a direction field for this directional uh, differential equation. Yeah, so uh, basically to draw this direction field, as I showed in my earlier videos, I usually use this slope field or direction field calculator. And here I've inputted it uh, just for the y variable, just pretend it's a p, and for the x, just pretend that's a t. I just couldn't change it on this. So I just put that in here, uh, point zero y, I'm point zero 0.08 y, that's just p, 1 minus uh, y, which is p over 1,000. And there's a minus 15, it just doesn't show there. So here, and you could uh, play around with it, but here's the direction field. I have it from 0 to 120, and then from 0 to uh, 1200 uh, on the um, y-axis. So it looks something like this. So, and you could also zoom in and out, change how fine you want it, etc. And here, I'm going to copy it and paste that here. Yeah, so here I've copied and pasted it uh, over here here and uh, yes yeah, so this is the direction field I'll just draw this as P I'll draw the axis a bit better so P and then over here is a, a T like that okay so now let's say it's uh, uh, part C what are the equilibrium solutions so we'll analyze that direction field in the later questions later parts of the question what are the equilibrium solutions and here I've already written that down. Well, from the graph above, it appears that P of T is roughly equal to 20. And to, I mean, T, uh, I mean, P of T is roughly equal to 250 and 750. 
So that's what it appears to be the equilibrium solutions. And again, what I mean by equilibrium solution is when the uh, uh, formula, I mean when the population is constant. And, and you could see that from here. So these are the the slopes. So when the when the population is constant is when the growth rate is zero. So here p prime is zero. So this is this appears to be one of them. This is p of t is equal to or roughly equal to this 200. So that's 300. We'll just say that's about 250. And I'll calculate it soon. That it, it is actually in fact this one's a bit sloped down. So it should be somewhere around here. As you can see, it's sloping up, up, and then there's a, a zero uh, growth right there. And this is 800, so 700 would be in the middle. Uh, this, so basically, at this point right here, P of T is roughly equal to 750 as well. I'll write this on as well, uh, roughly equal to. But I will show you that, in fact, it actually equals to it. And that's the only place that where the growth rate is zero. Everything else, you have a slope that's changing, and then there's a flat line across cross it. So this is the equilibrium solution, draw a flat line, roughly uh, over there as well. Now in fact we could actually uh, prove that this is, and again that's when the growth rate is zero, so what we'll do is we'll set dp over dt equals to zero, which equals to, well just uh, add our uh, equation there, and then, then solve for the p values. So when the growth rate is equal to zero is when 0.08 p 1 minus p over a thousand minus 15 like that yeah, and now the idea is to simplify this and solve for p so to do that first what I'm going to do is multiply this p inside here and I'm also going to multiply this by uh, 0 0.08 and divide it by 0 0.08 so that we could factor it out, so we could factor out the point zero eight out of it, and then we'll, what we'll end up is with a quadratic formula. So what we get is zero is equal to, and then we'll factor out this point zero eight out. So do that all at once. So factor out the point zero eight, multiply this p inside. We get a p minus a p squared over <clears throat> a thousand, and then there is a minus. Uh, 15, this one is factored out over 0 0.08. So we didn't change anything there. We just did this just so we can get the 0 0.08 out of there. And what I'm also going to do is factor out a negative sign. So we have a positive p squared. So we'll put a negative, negative, uh, negative like that. So we're just taking a negative out. Yes, yeah, so we're not changing anything. We just took a, a negative sign uh, out of there. So we just factored out a negative out of it. So we have this. So what we end up having is yeah, 0 equals to negative 0 0.08. And actually, before I write that down, I'm going to let's just solve this 15 over 0 0.08. Let's just simplify that. So 15, yeah, so 15 over 0 0.08. This just equals to, you can put in the calculator. I'll just want to do it by hand. So 15 over 8 over 100. The 100 goes on top, so we get 15. 100 over uh, 8, this is just dividing by it, so we could uh, put this in long division, and you can see my earlier videos on long division, 0, 0, so 8 goes into 15 once, and then what this happens now is, whoops, let's move that here, so this goes into it once, so it's 8, 1 times 1 is 8, so 15 minus 8 is, well, 7, because uh, 16 would have been 8. So we have this, bring the 7 and the 0 down. Now 70, well, 8 goes into it uh, 8 times, because 8 times 8 is 64. Subtract, we get a 6 and a 0. So 64 is a 8, so this obviously is a 7. So that's uh, 187. And then this is 60, this is 56, so 64 minus 8. It is 56 minus that, that's just a 4. Now we have to put a decimal place and put a 0 down. 8 goes into 40, well, 5 times, and that's just a clean 40. So that's it. So 187.5, but also I want to get rid of this 1000, so what I'll do is times by 1000 on everything and divide by 1000 and move this 1000 inside and rearrange it all 
So what we end up getting is a zero equals two. Let's put this uh, under a thousand, but move it over on this side. So negative 0 0.08 over a thousand. We can cancel this out because it's zero, but I'll just keep it there for just completing the sake. And now this p squared, the thousand cancels. So we have a p squared, move it on the left side. Negative p, so that'll be negative 1000 p. And then this uh, 15 over 0 0.08, that's 187.5 times by 1000. So this is going to be, uh, this is plus 187.5, and then this is moving the decimal place three times. So one, two, and three, so that's two zeros. One, two, three, so we have 187,000. And now this is a uh, yeah, quadratic formula, and this one again, we can cancel this all out, divide both sides, and this zero divided by this, that's just zero. So what we'll end up doing is, well, first of all, recall the quadratic formula and I'll write this down quadratic formula because we have, we have to solve for P and this one is not too straightforward quadratic formula and also you could factor it as well out but it's just not as simple so remember it's 0 equals to AX squared plus uh, BX plus C where A in this case is 1 and then B is negative 1,000, and then C is um, 187,500. So when this formula is X equals 2, X equals 2, negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Yeah, now in our case, this just means, well, P is equal to... Uh, instead of x, we have p. p is negative b, which was a uh, negative 1,000. 1,000 plus or minus, now we have square root, negative 1,000 squared minus 4. a was 1. a is 1. And then c is now 187500, like that. And then all divided by 2 times 1, which was uh, 1 in front of here. That's just 1. That's A. And here I've plugged that into the calculator. So negative, uh, uh, negative of a negative 1,000 plus square root negative 1,000 squared minus 4 times 1 times 187,500 divided by 2 times 1. That's uh, when we add a plus there, we get 750. And this is the exact same formula, but we add a negative there, which is 2. 50. So what this means is this equals 2, again, this equals to uh, 250, yeah, 250 and 750. Actually, I'll write this as, because uh, if it's a plus first, so it's equals to 750 or 250, which is exactly our equilibrium solutions. And note also that this uh, quadratic formula, this also means that, well, 0 equals 2, we have... Uh, this cancels, so we have that p squared minus 1000 p plus uh, 187500. This is a. This just means now we, we could factor this out. This is p minus uh, 750, uh, and then times it by p minus 250. And this is the same thing as using the quadratic formula. And you can even expand this out, multiply this out, out on both sides, just for completeness' sake. What we end up getting is, well, P times P is P squared minus, um, this one is P, no, I mean seven, negative 750 times P, that's 750P. When we just expand this out, then we have negative 50 times it by P, that is um, 250P, and then negative 50, negative 750 times negative 7, uh, I mean negative 250, that's positive. 750 times 250. And this one, that just adds up to a 1,000. So p squared minus 1,000. P, and then plus this part right here. Let's put that here. 750 times 250. Put a 0. 5 goes into it. Uh, 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 5 is 25. Add a 2. So 5. Add a 2. And then 5 times 
times 7 is 35, 37. Same thing here, add a 0 now. Now we have to add a yeah, another 0. And you can learn more about multiplication by hand in my other video. And now we go 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 5 is uh, 10. 2 times 7 is 14. Uh, carry the add the 1 is uh, 15 plus. 0, 0, 5, 7, 8, 1. So 1, 8, 7, 500. Yeah, so that's, I uh, just wanted to double check, uh, just to show you that it's the same thing. So that is what we have. So that just means that, again, our equilibrium solutions are this. This was just a, I just wanted to show that the same thing as a factoring when you use the quadratic formula. So, we've shown that these are the equilibrium solutions when the derivative is equal to 0, p of t is equal to 250 and 750. So, in fact, instead of saying it's roughly equal to, this equals to it. So, this equals to it. And I, and I could uh, write that down right here. So, p of t equals to 250 and P of t is equal to 750. These are equilibrium solutions. Like that. So that's the solution for it. And now let's look at the next part of the question, which was part D. Use the direction field to sketch several solution curves. Describe what happens to the fish population for various initial populations. So let's just start drawing those out. So uh, basically there's three zones we need to look at. The uh, above the 750, between 750 and 250, and then also at this um, uh, below 250, as well as on the equilibrium solution. So on the equilibrium, the solutions are just flat line, or, or in other words, constant. So if we start an initial population of P0 equals 200, so this goes, it just goes down, you just, all you gotta do is follow these down, and it goes down to zero. So this is a zero fish left, and if there's zero fish, it just can't grow, so you can't have a negative. Uh, so it just stays there. So basically, if you have under 250 population, the, the, and you're, you're basically uh, overfishing with a 15 fish per week, the population just goes to zero. And next one, if we look at, let's say, Let's say above the 250 at about 300. Let's say, let's just assume this is about 300. So P0 is equal to 300. As you see, the slope lines are going up. So we are going above it. And as you can see, it's, it's approaching the 750. Same if we started with uh, 300. P0 equals to 400 here. Uh, same idea, it's just going, following it across. Same thing if we started at PO is equal to 600, initial population. Follow this, it just goes flat line to the 750. And now if we started at, let's say, P0 is equal to 1000, it's just going down to the 750 as well. So it's flat lining to that 750 constant rate. And here I've uh, written this all down. So for zero between, I mean, population, initial population is between zero and 250, the population decreases to zero. Uh, in other words, it's overfishing. Overfishing. Like that. You're just fishing too, uh, too high of a rate. And for P0 is equal to 250, the population remains constant. For uh, between 250 and 750, the population increases and approaches 750. And similarly, at 750, that's just an equilibrium solution, and the population remains constant. For greater than 750, the population decreases and approaches 750. Yeah, so it just decreases like that. So, uh, yeah, that's all for today. And, uh, and as I stated earlier, I'll go over Part E in the next video, because that's just a bit more in-depth. i got to calculate explicitly and solve that equation explicitly so uh, and then compare it with it so so stay tuned for that one it's pretty interesting and going through the mathematics on it anyways hopefully you learned and like always you can download these exact notes in the link below thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution